All right, so now let's look at some examples. In this video, we're going to look at an example of a series circuit. So if we weren't told this was a series circuit, how would we recognize that? Well, we can see from our circuit diagram, we have a battery hooked up to three resistors. And the way they're hooked up is such that as we leave the battery, we have to go through resistor R1, we have to go through resistor R2, we have to go through resistor R3. We have no options, which would indicate to us that this is a series circuit. Um, so that information we would be able to gather from the diagram. We can also see we've been given a voltage and a series of resistances. Now, before you start writing those down, there's a special way that I like to keep track of all of my data in circuit problems. I like to make a little data table. So we're going to make rows for the total circuit and each resistor, R1, R2, and R3. So those are our rows. And what are we going to solve for each of these things? We need to solve for voltage, current, and resistance. So we have V, I, and R for the entire circuit and for each component, the three resistors. So let's start populating our data table. Let's start filling in the information we already know. Well, we know the, the battery voltage. We know the total voltage. That's 12 volts. We also know some of the resistances. R1's resistance is two ohms. R2's resistance is four ohms. And R3's resistance is six ohms. So that's our, our given information already listed in our data table. All right, well, where do we start with the circuit problem? Well, the, the best place to always start is simplifying your circuit. So let's redraw this circuit. Still has a 12 volt battery, but we, we want to redraw it in such a way that it has one total resistance. Now, when it's purely series or purely parallel, we can do that in one step. My last video will be showing what happens when we have a mix of series and parallel uh, components within a circuit. And then we have to slow down a little bit. We can't get to one total resistance in a single step. But these are all in series together. We can come up with their resistance in one step. So how do we do that? Well, we know this is a series circuit. We talked about why we would recognize it as a series circuit. And the rule for coming up with a total resistance for a series circuit is to take the direct sum, just add up all of those individual resistances. Well, R1 plus R2 plus R3 would be two ohms plus four ohms plus six ohms. Two plus four is six plus another six is 12 ohms, we can see the total resistance is 12 ohms, and we can add that to our data table. We now know the total resistance. And what did I tell you we would do once we found total resistance? We would generally find total current. And if you didn't know this, you could actually look at the data table, and it would help you figure out what to do next as well. Anytime you have two out of the three variables, V, I, and R, that is, if you have one blank spot in a row, you can solve for it. So we know we can solve for I total. Well, I total is given by V total over R total. So I total is going to be V total, 12 volts over R total, 12 ohms. So you know that's going to be 12 over 12 is 1, and the units are volts per ohm. But... I'm not actually gonna ask you guys to do much unit analysis here. We could technically swap these out for joule second per coulomb squared and joules per coulomb, and we would eventually get coulombs per second, which are the units for amps. But I'm fine with you guys just knowing that voltage is volts, resistance is ohms, and current is amps in, in this chapter. I'm not going to ask you to do some of the, the weirder unit analysis. Um, that's perfectly fine if you want to, but I'm also going to be satisfied if you just memorize the units and apply them 
as um, the situation arises. So here we know we're getting a current. We can assume it's going to be in, in amps. So we've got amps now as the total current. We know that that is the current coming out of the battery. One amp comes out of that battery and it flows around the circuit. Well, let's take a step back now from our total circuit where we have 12 volts total, R total, and I total, and move back to the individual components. We still have one amp flowing out of the battery. That's flowing right out of the battery. That is indeed the total current. And that total current is going to hit R1 and flow through R1, flow out of R1 into R2, out of R2 into R3, and back to the battery. This actually is one of our rules for, for circuits that in series circuits, series circuits have the same current. Every component has the same amount of current flowing through it. So we know that I total is one amp that comes out and it hits R1, R2, and R3. So we can just drop that down this entire column. One amp, one amp, one amp. The amount of current is the same for each component in series. That is just a rule that we know and we are able to populate that entire column in one fell swoop. And what are we left with? We actually can see now that we only have one thing to find out in each of these rows, which means we can solve for it. It's our voltage. We can now come up with the voltage drop from each individual resistor. Well, V equals IR across individual components. That means V1 equals I1, R1. I1 is one. One amp times R1 is two ohms. We know we're getting volts because this is a voltage, so amps times ohms is volts. Two volts would be V1, two volts. V2 is I2, R2. That's gonna be one amp is I2 times R2 is four ohms, four ohms. Amps times ohms again is volts because we know this is voltage, four volts. And then R3, or sorry, the voltage on R3, V3 is I3, R3. That is, again, one amp times six ohms for six volts that we lose there. And now what did I say about the voltage drops around a loop? We know we start with 12 volts. If we add up all of our voltage drops, they should be the same as the total. V total is 12 volts. Let's see what V1 plus V2 plus V3 is. That's two volts plus four volts plus six volts. Sure enough, it is 12 volts. And we have consistency. That's a good check to make sure that we didn't make any mistakes. And now if I asked you say, what was the voltage drop across R3? You could just look at your table and tell me. You've You've found all of the information about this circuit, and you're prepared to ask any questions. That is, except about power. So you can always throw on power as a bonus column. I don't like to put it on there at first because it's not generally used to solve for the other information, but once you've got everything, P equals IV, and so you just multiply I times V, one times 12, so P1, or sorry, P total, would be I total, V total. That's gonna be one amp times 12 volts. And again, we know power should be in watts, so don't worry too much about the units. If you want to check them, it's indeed gonna come out to joules per second as it should, um, but I'm letting you guys slide on, on this chapter. They're, they're not as smooth as the other chapters and not as enlightening. They're not as useful to study the units. So we get 12 watts, IV, 12 watts. And what about our individual pieces? P1 is I1, V1. I'm just gonna multiply these quickly. One times two is two watts. I2 times V2, one times four, four watts. One times six, six watts. 
And if we add up all of the individual components and their power consumptions, it should equal the total power supplied by the battery. And so we have 12 watts as our total power. P1 plus P2 plus P3 is 2 watts plus 4 watts plus 6 watts. Sure enough, 2 plus 4 plus 6 is indeed 12 watts. And our circuit is completely consistent. And we could answer any question you could possibly ask about the voltages, the currents, the resistances, or the powers for the total circuit or any individual component on it. Um, so that is a series circuit example. Next, we'll be looking at a circuit that is in parallel.